So the next thing I want to talk about are the big three C's of interviews. This is the thing you want to make sure you've got on your checklist when it comes to doing an interview. The first thing is you want to be concise. You want to get your points across clearly and quickly. Don't try and over impress intellectually. You know, you don't want to sort of start using big words and long language and talk for a lot. You know, it's not about how much you know, it's how much you care about their audience. Show them how much you care before you tell, tell them how much you know. It's a great little anecdote for any form of communication, whether you're trying to sell somebody in a, in a face-to-face sales meeting or doing an interview. Show them that you care before you show them how much you care before you before they will care how much you know or something like that. I'm sure you guys can put the the pieces together and make that uh, analogy make sense to you. <laughs> but basically, it's all about not trying to over impress them intellectually, and also try and minimise the ums, the ahs, the well you knows, all that sort of stuff. Again, concise and articulate is what we're going for here. Now, when it comes to concise, it's about being short, short sound bites, because every answer can be used as a sound bite later on on their TV or radio show. For example, think about sometimes when you listen to news reports at the top of the hour on different radio stations. They'll actually grab sound bites out of interviews that were used earlier in that hour as part of the news segment. So if you can give a quick 15 second or even a 5 second sound bite, that's articulate about your particular topic, they will quite often grab that and use that throughout the day, which is a great way to leverage off the one interview you've done to get exposure on a regular basis throughout the day. Now, the second C is conversational. So you want to be relaxed. Remember, it's all about having a conversation with that interviewer on air, that disc jockey or that TV host. You want to engage with the reporter. You want to actually try and build some rapport with them. Be relaxed. Think of the audience as they were 14 to 16 year old people and use the language they understand. It's not about trying to, again, overcomplicate things and sound like you know everything. Just speak to people in their natural language. It's the same rule that applies when you're writing your autoresponder series or sales letters. For those of you who have done you know, copywriting courses, they say, write like you speak and write like you're speaking to a teenager. Same goes for a radio interview as well. And even an interview with just a journalist as well. Because just because they're writing about your particular topic doesn't mean they actually understand it and know the intricacies of it. So you want to speak to them in basic language so they can then get your story across effectively to the readers of their trade journal or magazine. And finally, you want to try and be catchy. And don't be stupid and push for a joke, but be catchy. Catchy is memorable, which means you can get back on the station on a regular basis. Catchy gives sound bites. You want to have something short, sharp, and catchy to say that can be remembered or used in a newspaper clip, or sorry, a news uh, reel clip they might do at the top of the hour on a radio station. But mainly, you want to keep things simple. They're the main tips for actually interviewing a, um, a process or going through the interview process. But what types of actual interviews are there? I also want to talk really high level again just to reiterate the three types of interviews you can possibly do. The first one is a phoner for print. Now again, we've sort of implied this a lot, a lot of the way through this session that it's done over the phone. It's immediate and easy to do. You can even do them in your underwear. Very liberating if you get to that point. I'd love to hear from you. Feel free to send an email through or leave a comment on the blog if you do an interview in your underwear. It'd be very cool. Uh, don't want a photo? Don't want a tweet pic? Just an email. Let me know you've done it. The second type of interview is a face-to-face interview. Now these only usually happen if it's a feature article or they need a specific photo for the story. They're not going to send a journalist out there to sit down with you face to face to do an interview if it's for a, a newspaper, a magazine, or a trade journal. It's just not worth it. They can get a much effect, much more effective result over the phone. Now don't worry too much if you actually do a face to face interview because the same rules apply for everything. But again, you probably won't do a face to face interview straight out of the box. You're going to actually be doing uh, some radio stuff and some uh, newspaper stuff to get your skills up before you're going to be a big enough brand, so to speak, to be able to get that face-to-face feature story article. And then there's live radio or TV interviews, which is typically all about general interest stories. And the reason it's all about general interest is that you're going to very rarely find a TV show or a radio station that's about underwater kickboxing. 
But if you can tie that story into a general interest piece, that's when you'll get the TV and radio station calling you for interviews. One thing if it's a TV interview, I strongly recommend you look up a little bit of information about body language. Because if you're going to be live to air, you want to make sure that your body language is coming across in a professional, uh, coherent manner. But again, the same rules apply as the phoner, but it's just live to air.